It's hard to believe it's actually been nine months since State Comptroller Tom DiNapoli was elected to his first full term as the state's top fiscal watchdog after serving in that role for nearly four years following the resignation of Alan Hevesy. During his time in office, he has seen the state's pension fund drop significantly during the economic downturn of 2008, and now he has seen its resurgence back to pre-recession levels, actually. The Comptroller is joining us in the studio to talk more about the pension fund's rebound and some other topics. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Liz. That's... That's quite a bounce. Well, we had two very good years. Uh, this year, a 14.6% return. Uh, we're up to about $146.5 billion. So when you factor in the amount of money we paid out in benefits over the past couple of years, right. you certainly uh, could see that we are uh, back at our peak. We were at $155 billion before that. So it shows good strength, good resurgence. We're benefiting from the markets having come back. Uh, but you know we're still in a very volatile economic and investment climate, so we're still very cautious about where we're headed for the future. What percentage of the pension fund is actually indexed? It's a pretty high oh, percentage. Oh, a very high percentage. I mean, keep in mind our, our basic uh, breakdown is about 70, 30, uh, you know, between equities and fixed income, and much of the equities, uh, a great deal of it uh, is indexed. So we very much rise or fall based on how the markets are doing. And there's always that great debate uh, within the investment world are, you know, is active management, do you get added value, yep. or are you better off uh, g going in, into passive management, indexing, and, and being in there for the long haul. The advantage of a pension fund, obviously, is we're going to be around forever. We're, we're, you know, our investment horizon is a perpetual one. So we, we, we obviously do have, you know, more of it uh, in the indexes, and uh, we do have confidence long term in the markets. But, you know, the, the problem is when you have an unusual year as we had in 08 and 09 where you know we lose 26 percent you mm. know negative return you're really an unprecedented loss you, it, it's very hard you know to anticipate for that but that is exactly I mean during the controllers race in 2010 when people were and, and even actually when you were selected by the legislature that Elliot Spitzer at the time and then and then other people who were critics said well you don't have any investment investment experience and I think uh, supporters and even myself would say well but he's not day-to-day -day stock picking right. that's not um, what the controller yeah, I, does. I always say people assume especially in New York where you, where you have you know the, the sole trustee there's a notion that that means one person, the controller, is sitting there, you know, with like the newspaper, an eye shade. Yeah, yeah, saying buy this, sell that, you know, and, and that's not what it is at all. We, we have a, we have a professional staff, uh, a very capable professional staff. We have outside consultants that we retain that are that are part of the investment decision. We also have advisory committees that guys. We have an investment advisory committee. We have a real estate committee. So there's a lot that goes into this. But uh, you know, the reality is we are very much tied to the health of the markets. Uh, so we're benefiting uh, from that uh, that resurgence in the markets. And you know, again, long-term horizon. So we can be very patient investors. The the difficulty is in the short run we're still absorbing the impact of that tremendous loss. And because of the way we calculate the rates. We do a five-year smoothing of the rate, so right. that big loss of 08 and 09 is still going to be with us. There's still going to be pressure upward in terms of contribution rate, and that's why we have in the short run people still concerned about the cost of pensions. Well, to, to that end, I mean, one thing that you did is actually increase the contribution for local pensioners, right, if I'm not mistaken, well, for the, local governments. For local the, governments, for the right. employers, local governments uh, on behalf of their employees and, and state government. And well. now that you have uh, uh, this amazing performance of the pension fund, there's nothing that you can do. You can't go back to them and say, okay, well, actually, now we're seeing uh, the investment actually go up and perform in, in a better way. You don't have to contribute in the way well, that Well, again, you know, there's, there's always a lag in, in terms of how we do this. So we, we do a five-year averaging of our investment return. You know, imagine if in, in, in the year that we were minus 26 percent, we based our contribution rate just on that one year. You can imagine what people would be paying, could, couldn't manage it at all. So certainly this good year and last year's good year of, you know, 25 percent positive return, uh, that that's factored in, but we still have uh, that that negative year that's part of the calculation as well. So there is going to still be upward pressure on on the rates. I think after two good years, and we haven't finalized the rates, we haven't announced them yet. We'll we'll do that uh, you know by Labor Day. Uh, I think you'll see even if there is an increase, and I expect there will be. It'll be less less Wait, so than less we've had. than. This is from 2012. So the average contribution running from 11.9 to 16.3, less than that in the next increase. No, I think the increase will be less. That was a, that was a we had we had two big jumps right. in the past two years. Right. I think there there will still be an increase. 
it will be a less severe increase than we've had. I see. So that's actually a good thing for municipal governments that are always already saying, hey, you know, the kind of the mandate relief yeah. getting into the pensions did not include the kind of pension reform and the creation of the sixth tier that people were hoping well, for. Well, but there's still going to be upward pressure on the rates. And, and we don't know the rate yet. So remember, as part of the tax cap, there is the, that option if the increase is more than 2%. Right. So, but we don't have those numbers yet. Uh, I'm confident in the long-term health and strength of the pension system. But in the short run, that terrible year of 08 and 09 is going to be with us for a couple more years, mm. and we're still going to feel the crunch of that. You know, the problem is, you remember we had Tier 5 uh, adopted not that long ago, and, and that will save a significant amount of money. In 30 but, years. Well, that's, that's the challenge. When you're dealing with a pension fund and you're dealing with changes that affect new employees, the impact won't be felt for a period of time. So what is your position on the sixth pension tier? Because this is something that the governor now says is a main priority, and he finds this to be his his biggest failing, actually, in a legislative session that had almost no failings for the governor. He had, he had a very strong session. But he says that this is he's going to push. Isn't this difficult for you, first as, of the, as the steward of the pension fund, but also you are a major supporter and are majorly supported by the by the public employees unions. Well, in my record has been clear. I support defined benefit uh, pension plan. Right. I think that's why uh, some of those groups have supported me. That's been my position for a long period of time. I think it's significant to point out the governor's proposal continues a defined benefit pension plan. So I, I think in terms of the fundamentals of, of of retirement security for public workers, you know, we're on the same page. Tier five happened because people were willing to dialogue and talk. Uh, if Tier 6 is going to happen or any changes, you know, again, I think uh, the men and women who are affected by that, as represented by the unions, they need to be part of the dialogue did, and the discussion. Did you agree with the administration's approach that they opened up this idea of creating a sixth tier as they were negotiating contract talk, uh, contracts well, with Pep in and way CSEA? They're, they're, in a way, they're separate because in, in the state we don't negotiate pension through, through that process. Know, but it's, it's a different. little bit of a carrot and a stick thing because, look, the, the, pension, the, the pension is something that the unions care about quite a bit. Yeah. And union leaders said, look, because of all this incredible performance, that we're seeing now in, in the pension fund, and we're in the middle of contract talks, you're actually antagonizing the rank and file by bringing something up that we don't like to hear. Well, um, I wasn't a part of that strategy. I, you know, my main message is the pension fund is on the rebound. It provides a very important level of retirement and economic security for our public workforce. It's been part of what has been the bargain of working uh, in, in the public sector. The average pensions are a lot less than people realize in our employee retirement system. You're talking about an eighteen about an eighteen thousand dollar you know average pension. It often is the difference between retirees continuing to live in the state, pay taxes, contribute to the local economy. So I, I think we need to look at the positives of that system and uh, have confidence in in our long term strategy. Uh, in the short run, it is certainly reasonable for people to say, hey, these costs have been going up. How can we do a better job of managing it? It is up to the legislature and the governor to set the parameters of, of, of what the tiers will be or what the benefits will be. Uh, we will be the stewards and administer that plan, however it's determined. But my strong feeling is any further changes, as happened with Tier 5, the, the employee representatives have to be at the table and be part of the discussion. There are communities in the nation, not New York yet, that have pension funds actually that they can't pay out. I mean, they just run out of money. And as you have more and more people getting into the system in Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3, with quite generous um, benefits, you are seeing pension funds really come under strain. Is there anything, aside from changing the contribution plan, is there anything that you can do in the short term to manage that strain that you're going to continue to keep seeing as the number of people who retire increases? Well, we, we did do something uh, on my recommendation. Unfortunately, some have, I think, characterized it inappropriately. The smoothing I, you're I, talking I, about? Well, no, it's, it's another version of the smoothing, and, and, and that is the, the option for localities, if they want to, and, and for government employers, to take a portion of the increase in the years that we had the steep increase and, uh, in, in effect, have an extended payment plan, right. like a balanced budget. But the critics going, say, but that, you're borrowing well, today. Because, to, because to, the critics are the same people that, that don't believe in a defined benefit pension system, by and large. So they want to poke holes in no matter what we do. So people complain that the locals have a hard time managing the increased costs, so we come up with a way for them to manage it. Well, no, that's not good because you're, you know, well, you know, it's no different than you're paying your utility bill. Many people opt for balanced billing. There are some times of the year where the, the bills are higher, sometimes lower. You want to you try to smooth that out. That's the option we provide here. And what the critics always fail to mention is that the other piece of that, and why we recommended it, is that as the rates start to come down, as they will, that 
we will set up reserve accounts so that money will be set aside mm. to deal with the next increase. So that's an, an, an opportunity to try to have some stability in the, in, in the pension rate. Just two things, uh, two more things. One is your unusual relationship that you've forged with the state attorney general. I mean, that is an investiga investigative sort of situation that you're doing with him. It's never actually been done before, if I'm not mistaken. I is it bearing fruit? Well, it's just started. Uh, our, our, our operation integrity is really an attempt to say, you have the state's fiscal watchdog in the controls office, you have the chief attorney and investigator in the attorney general's office. You know, between their in investigators and lawyers and our, and our auditors, uh, aren't there things that we could be doing together early in a process to really get to some of the public integrity and corruption issues that mm. are out there? Because uh, very often, it, you know, in the past, we may have an audit or an investigation unit may find something. We ultimately may refer it to the Attorney General, but after we've gone through many months or sometimes even longer an investigation, this is an opportunity to collaborate earlier in the process. We have a few things that are in the pipeline, hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm expecting there'll be some announcements at some point in the near future, but uh, the relationship is new and it's working productively. Our staff are meeting and they're talking regularly. Uh, unfortunately, there are too many of these uh, issues out there for us to investigate. And that's what we're working some, on. Some observers have suggested that this is actually a way for the Attorney General to get around the fact that the governor has not given him subpoena power in, in public corruption cases. That's something that you have, actually. So because you guys have collaborated, you empower the Attorney General to issue subpoenas. Is that right? Well, we can on a case-by-case -case basis. And that's absolutely, we, we, we have the ability to do that referral. Which we've done before. We, we've done it in the past with the Attorney General. We've done it with district attorneys. Uh, so there are different options as far as those referrals. But that is an important power that we have in the Controller's Office uh, to provide that criminal jurisdiction. Uh, and, and again, this is part of the benefit of a collaboration and doing it early. We hear of things. We see things in our audits. We all get calls and tips. Uh, we're just having a, you know, at a time where we all have fewer resources. You know, we had budget cuts in our office, sure. the AG too. So we're trying to figure out now how can we marshal our resources more effectively earlier, get the job done for the people of the state. I just want to ask you also, and just brief politics, and it's really early, obviously. I mean, you have to run again. You just won. In 2010. You just said nine months. I know. Of the I know. It's really? been a while. Months, yeah. But you just posted a fundraising filing with only $53,000 on hand. That's not a lot. I mean, you raised more than 300 and change, mm -hmm. but you spent almost as much as you raised. Mm -hmm. uh, are you not focused on this? I know that there was a bill that passed the assembly that you would like to have your office be a model for public campaign yeah. financing. It doesn't look like it's going to pass the Senate. I know the governor is very pro on public campaign financing. Mm -hmm. It's also 30 to 40 million dollars mm -hmm. when the state is a little bit in a fiscal crunch. Are you not focused on fundraising? Well, you know, uh, I think people who know me know that I, I, I love the public service part. Uh, unfortunately, part of the politics is to do the fundraising. And sure. I think, you know, for the controls office, uh, there are obvious challenges with this office that the other offices don't have. People are precluded from giving. Yep. And we've worked very hard because of, you know, what happened before I got there. Uh, you know, to restore the reputation of the office. I think we've done that, but it does limit our options as far as, far as fundraising. And, and this may come as a surprise to you, but there aren't a whole lot of givers out there that are just waiting with their checkbook to say, <laughs> i got to give to the controller's race because that's the hot race in New York State. It was State. last year. Well, it was last year because somebody had an awful lot of money they pulled out of their True. own pocket. You know, but are so, you secure? Do you believe that you're going to be able uh, to hold on? Uh, you know, I... I got more money than my opponent has in the bank. Well, you got no opponent. There, you, so there go. you go. So there you go. Perhaps there'll be an uncontested election. <laughs> you never I, know. Hope springs I think, we, I, think we have a long, I think I have a long way to go. <laughs> and I think we showed folks, even being outspent just about two to one and with everything against us, the people still made a wise choice in the controller's race in 2010. I think they'll do the same in 2014. Okay. Well, thankfully, it is a long way from now because we got a lot of things to get through <laughs> before then. I want to thank you very much good for coming in. It's good to see you here. Good to see you. Nice to be in the studio with you. Thanks.